Previously on making over our dream home. Are you fixing? Pup and Daddy? We turned the spare bedroom into a nursery just in time to welcome the fifth member of our family. <laughs> we spent many months slowly transforming our worn out deck into a dreamy patio space. Spent the last couple of evenings just lounging here on our new sofa. And now we're tackling a room we didn't expect to touch for a number of years, the kitchen. time coming. When we first moved in a few years ago in October 2020, we had no intention of giving our 90s kitchen a facelift until like five or ten years down the road when we would completely gut it and redo it. We wanted to save up. We wanted to make this kitchen spectacular. We had big plans. But when we first walked into this home and we were viewing it, this kitchen, it felt very nostalgic to us because Zach grew up in a kitchen very much like it. Um, all his childhood and my grandparents also had a kitchen very much like this one after living in this home for a while and working in this kitchen and just being in the presence of this orange oak we just we realized maybe we're not so okay with leaving it for five or ten years while we didn't have the budget to completely gut and redo this kitchen quite yet we knew we needed to do something temporarily while we waited something that would last a good five or ten years that we would be really happy with and so here we are doing a kitchen renovation as cheap as we possibly can let's let's take a look at the kitchen before We had cracked linoleum, it was peeling up the edges. The countertops were stained in a number of areas. The under cabinet lighting worked sometimes, not all the time, and the light fixtures were just really not my thing. Paint colors in here, we didn't even paint in here when we first moved in because, well, I don't even know why, <laughs> but the paint was green and yellow and it was just, it just, wasn't working for us anymore. Not to mention the sink did not match the faucet and we had this large display cabinet that looked nice but was very dysfunctional. The appliances, yes, they're dated. They are 26 years old and they're going strong. However, we are not replacing those until the day that they die for a number of reasons. First of all, I think white, even dated appliances look better in a renovated kitchen than brand new modern uh, stainless steel ones would. Also appliances are really expensive and it felt like an unnecessary expense since we are trying to do this as budget friendly as possible. I had a pretty clear vision of what I wanted the kitchen to look like. I knew the style I was going for but I didn't know exactly how we were going to tackle each individual piece of this kitchen. I knew I wanted beige cabinets, something that wasn't white, something that wasn't orange oak. I knew I wanted wainscoting around the entire room and I knew I wanted to switch out the light fixtures. And there were some areas I was okay with splurging on because I knew that they would be pieces that would be brought into the new kitchen as well. So that we weren't just buying them temporarily, we were buying them to use for a very long time. But everything else we were trying very hard just to not spend a lot of money unless absolutely necessary. Now as for the flooring and the countertops and pieces like that, I did not know what I was gonna do and I figured, you know what, we'll climb that mountain when we get there. So first things first, back in January, we started painting these kitchen cabinets. Actually, first, we removed that under cabinet lighting. <laughs> there were so many complications with this under cabinet lighting and it was probably my number one complaint about the entire kitchen. They only worked half of the time. And they were so bulky that there was like bulk, bulkheads, that's not the right word. There was like a ledge of wood underneath the cabinets to hide the lighting, which looking at the kitchen looked fine, looked great. But in actuality, it was very dysfunctional because I couldn't fit like any of my countertop appliances on my counter. The piece of wood came down so low that I couldn't fit my coffee maker under there, my espresso machine, my mixer, my blender. We knew we wanted to make these cabinets work for as long as possible because they are solid wood cabinets. There's nothing wrong with them. This kitchen is actually very functional and I love the size and, and the way it's it's created, like it works, flows very well. But there were bits and pieces of this kitchen that we just 
removed to make it a little bit easier, more modern. One of those things was the range. Now, I originally thought we would make some kind of a like DIY cover to hide the range, make it look pretty blended in a little bit better, but then I realized we never used the range. Like, I don't think I turned it on once and it was ugly and honestly, it was so gross. Like, it was just caked with food stains and oils and we decided just to remove it altogether. Speaking of removing things, this section is coming out today and I am so excited. It's gonna free up so much counter space. It's a beautiful feature of the kitchen. It's unique. It's something I've never really seen before, but it's not, it's, it's not practical. The door is really small, so in order to get anything in here, it gets really tricky because not much fits. And it takes up a lot of counter space. So we feel like it would be more beneficial to just take this out and create open shelving. So we thought we'll just take this out and do open shelving, but then looking at the crown up top, that would be difficult to replicate. So we decided we're just gonna rip this whole thing out, which makes me a little sad because this is a really high, use cupboard. We reach in here all the time, but we're just gonna have to figure out a different system. Okay, it's off. It feels much more spacious. It almost feels borderline empty. We're gonna keep the cabinet just in case because we might actually put it back if our plan doesn't work out then we still have this as a backup and we know it looks nice now my question is and tell me what you think <clears throat> we're gonna be doing wainscoting all the way around probably like two-thirds up the wall is it gonna look funny if we continue the line here and then do open shelving i don't know because it might throw off the lines if we do like three shelves right yeah like should we be doing wainscoting the whole way up all the way too around? Too Is that too much? There's a few things we're not quite sure of yet and we haven't fully made decisions. At least in the case that it doesn't work out, we do have a backup plan. What's that? That's electrical wires. We began by taking off the cabinet doors and prepping them for paint. And before someone says something in the comments, yes, we realize now, much later, <laughs> after everything was said and done, that there's a much easier way of taking off the cabinet doors that did not include taking off the hinges. We kicked ourselves in the pants a little bit for not knowing that, but that's what DIY projects are all about. You live and you learn. prepping the cabinet doors I got to thinking there was a trend going around everyone was using like oven cleaner to strip furniture and, and stuff like that and it made me wonder what if instead of painting we stripped our cabinets I thought this would be such a cool idea I mentioned it to Zach he was totally on board we thought you know maybe if we take it down to its natural wood this kitchen would be really, really cool, really beautiful, and something different. You know, I feel like whenever somebody DIYs a kitchen, they always paint the kitchen cabinets, because that's the easy thing to do. Um, and it, it makes such a huge impact, but we wanted to do something different, if possible. And so we started playing around with the idea of this. We picked up a few different um, strippers, and we started testing it on the doors and seeing what what might work the best and now unfortunately I did lose the footage somehow somewhere I don't know where it went which is very disappointing but we did 
uh, do patches on the cabinet doors to see what it would be like, how it would work, and we came up with wildly different results. And it took so much scrubbing and sanding and work and we just realized, you know what, this isn't gonna work. We don't love any of the results that we got from these strippers and so we're just gonna go ahead with plan A and paint. Okay, today we are going shopping for the kitchen. We've kind of been picking at things this past week. We realized we can't really make decisions um, or proceed with renovation until we do some shopping and find the things that we need. Linoleum, wainscoting, um, sink, probably countertops. I'm not really sure what we all need. We also need paint samples if we do decide to paint the cabinets. So we are making decisions today. For me, when it comes to designing a space and picking out different pieces, especially when we're trying to do it very budget friendly, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of shopping, going to the same stores over and over and over again, um, going there, seeing what they have, envisioning how those things might look in our space, coming back home, uh, realizing those things that we thought about might not actually work, and then going back to the store and looking at other things. And it's a lot of back and forth. A lot of thinking so this was one of many trips to the stores but eventually it did all come together The one thing we knew for sure was that we were painting the kitchen cabinets and so we started working on that. We wanted to make sure the paint would stick and would stick well and for a long time and so we wanted to prep them properly. The prep is always the longest, hardest, most time consuming part because it's so much work and you see so little results. <laughs> but it's so important to prep properly in order to get a fantastic end result. shift paint booth. It's just tarps hanging from the ceiling. This is the opening to get inside. And then, here, I'll have to bring it closer so you can see. Let's see if it actually works. The goal is to try to, like, contain the paint fumes and the dust, but we'll see. So inside this makeshift paint booth, there is a chain hanging from the ceiling that is attached to a hanger that is attached to the door. So Delilah's thought was to put hooks in all the doors. So we've sanded them all down and then we drilled little holes and put these hooks inside and we're using coat hangers. I'm gonna hook it on. Same works Whatever. to like. And then we're just hooking them on like so and then hanging them on that chain. And then they're probably just gonna hang here. Like that. You know, we just going all Meta Knight on us over here. We just power through, you know? <laughs> Old yo. This is not our original idea. I got this idea off someone on Instagram, and we thought this would be the best way to tackle painting our cabinet doors because we don't have to lay it all out, paint it, let it dry flip it over, paint it, because that's more time consuming. We can just paint it all at once. Um, Do a and, full coat. Yeah, and then let them dry. 
But you can paint both sides at once too. So it's so much faster. So you can do a full coat versus doing half coats. Yeah. Because you almost have to wait like six or 12 hours for it to dry before you can flip it. And then we can do them all at once and then have them all hanging to dry. So we're hoping this is the most effective way. It's a little bit more time consuming to efficient. prep. The most efficient way. The most efficient way to paint. <laughs> effective way. <laughs> What did I say? Yeah, effective. That's what I said? Yeah, oh. the most efficient way. Okay, well. <laughs> English lessons with Zach. <laughs> we purchased a spray gun, like a paint spray gun back when we were painting our trim with the thought of painting our cabinet doors in the future. So now here we are. I'm excited. This is when things are finally gonna start taking shape and changing and looking like we're actually doing something. one of our uh, doors, cabinet doors, fell and broke into a whole bunch of pieces. So Zach's trying to glue that back together. It should be fine. It should be fixable. But new plan of action for the big cabinet doors. We're going to double up hangers and then we should be fine. I was like, you know what? I, I really want to paint. Um, and I was like, I really don't want to paint. So <clears throat> he's editing my, my vlog and I'm gonna paint. And I'm so excited. <laughs> Here we go. First bit of paint on these cabinets. They fit perfectly. by Dunn Edwards and we got it color matched at our local hardware store. Megan Alexandra on Instagram, whom I follow and am very inspired by. She painted her kitchen cabinets this color. I loved it, it's beautiful. She's a color whiz. I did get a few paint swatches and I did see what a few other colors look like, but this was by far, hands down, the winner. I woke up early this morning and I just wanted to paint. <laughs> All I want to do is paint. My kitchen looks like this, and today I have to spend a lot of time in here baking cakes, cooking supper, preparing for having people over. And I just don't want to do that when my kitchen is like this, so I'm going to paint as much as I can before the kids wake up.
how gross and gunky this caulking is. I don't know why on this side, the whole way down, they did a terrible job and like they just didn't care. Before I paint, I gotta scrape that off. So I've got my handy dandy scraper. I'm gonna go at this. It's like fully paint it over this is gonna take forever <laughs> there was also caulking all the way along the uh the floor between the cabinets and the linoleum oh man this is awful so we did peel all that away as well it was pretty pretty nasty this floor is in pretty rough condition so we will be replacing it anyway the floor is getting replaced countertops are being replaced and we're gonna be painting the walls eventually as well so we're just like slapping paint on <laughs> Zach actually ended up removing the crown molding altogether and redoing the caulking. It was just so poorly done that he couldn't even, we couldn't even make it work. So we just took it off, completely redid that. Also, when you're doing things like this, when you're uh, filling holes, filling lines, filling cracks, make sure that you use paintable caulking. That is the mistake that the people used before. They used a caulking that was not paintable and so the paint was just not sticking and it looked really terrible. That is key here. Here we go. The first door. That's about time. That was such a happy moment for me. I couldn't believe how much paint can just completely transform a space. taking the kids out today so that Zach has some time to really focus in on the kitchen. He's gonna be touching up little spots. The cracks really weren't noticeable before, but after you paint, that's when all of the imperfections really start to come out. So we did take some extra time and went over the cabinet doors, filled in any sparse areas, filled in the cracks, painted over them, and it just looks so much more clean and so much better. It's been a minute since uh, we last talked. We kind of took the week off to do other stuff, but now we are trying to get back at it. And the thing that is happening today is that these lights are coming down. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that I let it be this way for this long. I've hated these lights since the day we moved in, but they've done great. And now it's time to change them up. So we ordered these from Amazon. They're both very similar. One of them is gonna go here, the other one's gonna go behind you. We also have pot lights in this kitchen, so like there's a lot of light in here. The light that's gonna go up behind you is the same light that we have in two of our bedrooms. It's a classic oil row bronze schoolhouse light. The only difference is that this one uh, has a rod. This one has a rod that extends down from the ceiling so it kind of hangs, hovers over the dining table. And I thought this oil rub bronze was perfect because it matches throughout the rest of the house. It also matches the handles on the cabinets. We kept the original hardware and this will match perfectly. My only concern is that these are both single bulb lights and the lights that are here previously are, this one's three, that one's four, I think. It might be a little too dim. But like I said, we do have pot lights in here. So I think we'll be fine. All right, 
right now we're trying to figure out what we want to do around the windows for trim. We haven't trimmed any windows in this house. We've only trimmed around the doors. So we've never thought about like how it would look or how we want to blend it in or what exactly we want to do. We found a few scrap pieces of trim that we've been using for the doors. We want to figure something out because we want to have a ledge on the bottom, like extend that little bottom part out just a little bit so that there's more space to put like a plant in the window or something like that. And I feel like it gives it a lot of character. We don't want to do just a basic trim. We want to do something just a little fancier. That looks nice, but I'm wondering if maybe just a basic piece would look better there. Yeah, and then basic all the way around. And then this on top. On top. You can see on our doors we have what's called an architrave up top. So we're going to keep that consistent throughout the rest of the house. Um, like on all the doors, we're going to do that on top of all the windows. I think that'll look really good with just a basic trim around the edges and then a nice little ledge on the bottom. All the windows in our house are suffering from weather damage. Uh, we have very harsh winters here. And so there's a lot of condensation that builds up in the windows and then the trim gets kind of rotted and it's not good. They need to be replaced, but we wanted to make do with what we had. So we came up with a solution that completely transformed these windows. you know what I'm gonna put myself to good use and I'm gonna start painting plan as of right now is to just paint every surface that remains in the same color that we have throughout the rest of our home and that is Swiss coffee by Benjamin Moore that may change along the way but I know for sure without a doubt that I want the ceiling and the top half of the walls in that color which brings me to talk about these ceilings so these ceilings aside from the beams the beams are drywall um, or not the beams, the bulkhead. Honestly, I want so badly to rip this out, but that's something that'll just happen in the next five or 10 years whenever we do the big reno because it doesn't make sense to rip it out right now. It's functional, it's fine. And the same goes for the popcorn ceiling. So inside this bulkhead, there's popcorn ceiling and over by the dining table or above the dining table in the dining room, there is also popcorn ceiling. And now we've been scraping the popcorn ceiling off everywhere else throughout the house, but I just don't think it makes sense to do it now. It's pretty subtle, like it's the more modern <laughs> popcorn ceiling. It's not that super long stuff that they used to put up. I think as long as you just paint it all the same color, it won't be very noticeable. So let's do this. <laughs> off all the edges but sometimes I actually find it easier just to freehand it so that's what I'm gonna try and if it doesn't work we're gonna go to the tape <laughs> We stayed up really late that night painting as much as we possibly could because we were planning on doing a wall treatment on the bottom half of the wall. That part did not need to be painted. So we just focused on the upper half. In exactly one week, we are getting new flooring installed in this kitchen. We're not doing it ourselves. We're getting the professionals to do it just because it saves us time and we don't know how to do it. So we're just gonna let the professionals handle this one. But before that happens, we need to prepare the space so that they can come in and do their thing, which means that today we are ripping up this flooring and we're ripping it out a little bit in advance just in case 
uh, we run into issues, you know, there might be some water damage, we don't know. You never know with renovations, so we're giving ourselves a little bit of heads up, a little bit of time. Yeah. Wow, you're doing so good. Wow, we're just getting a head start. Keep going. I can help. Linoleum came out really easily and we were super happy to find out that there was very little damage to the floor. The only spot where there was a little bit of rotting happening was underneath the windows. And like I was saying before, it's because of our harsh winters, the ice that builds up on the windows thaws and drips down down the walls to the floor. And so it's actually very common where we live to have a little bit of rotting on the subfloor underneath the windows, but it wasn't very bad. We just painted a sealer over top of it to hopefully prevent it from future damage. And then we played the waiting game and waited for the linoleum to be installed. So until we get our flooring installed and our countertops delivered, we're at a little bit of a standstill. The last thing that Zach can do in the meantime is work on the electrical. So he's doing that. He's, uh, I <laughs> I don't really know what he's doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and let him explain that to you. We're not using this undercat lighting anymore on this side, and so I'm pulling out this feed, which feeds the other undercat lighting, and just rerouting it to the switch box. in here which was the, when there was that cabinet this is where the first under cabinet lighting was and essentially the way lights work they're all just tied together so since this was the first one and it's not here anymore I had to pull the wires back to this box do some rewiring so that you know that's the first one right so it kind of continues on Oh, I see. My basic mind can't quite comprehend all of this stuff, but from what I can understand, we have these lights um, that are really low profile, and they're gonna look really nice underneath if you won't be able to tell, like they're really thin. So putting them underneath, you won't notice them at all, but they can't be uh, wired to a switch like they originally were but I still want to be able to turn them on by a switch. It's more complicated, it's so hard is, to is that like a basic it understanding? Will be on a it, it will yeah, be. it will be on a switch. So what we have to yeah. do, he's going to install several different um what's the word? <laughs> Boxes. Plugs. And plugs. several two. <laughs> he is installing two different plugs inside the cabinets, cutting into the cabinets and into the wall to install these boxes, wiring these lights up to be plugged in to those so that somehow in the end, I'll have my low profile lights and I'll still be able to turn them on with the switch. Moment of truth. Uh -huh. That's gonna be really nice. I miss my under cabinet lighting. getting our vinyl flooring installed today. The guys just came here. They came earlier than expected. So we gotta get out of the house and get out of their hair. Last night we moved everything out of the kitchen. All of the, like the fridge and the stove, everything is in the living room and in the playroom and out of the way. So the floor is clear and Mom. we're gonna leave. We're gonna come back to new floor. What are your thoughts? Good, bad? 
I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. Whoa, <laughs> that is. Ooh, that's gonna take some getting used to. Well, like it looks good, but that's gonna take some getting used to. What do you think? This is a bold move for me, so I've been nervous about this for a long time. I like it. One, two, three. Since there was linoleum in here before, whatever we installed, whatever we did, had to be very low profile. And since we do have beautiful engineered hardwoods throughout the rest of the house, it didn't make sense to do like vinyl plank just because of the contrast between quality and style. So really the only option here was vinyl sheet. I took this as my opportunity to do something a little funky, something a little out of the box, you know, go big or go home because this is temporary. Victoria from our growing story over on Instagram, she has these uh, white and green checkered tiles in her kitchen in her bathroom and her style is so much like my own and she she inspired this decision her her home inspired this decision I will say that maybe black and white flooring was a bad decision with little kids we have to vacuum at least three times a day and mop at least once daily but overall I think it suits the space and it does the job now, countertops and sink. I struggled here. I felt like everything we tried to do, we couldn't do. Originally, I wanted a double apron front farmhouse sink, but after looking into it and researching it, we realized that a double, like a standard double size, was way too big for the cabinet that is here now. I sacrificed my double sink and I, I got a single. At this point, we weren't sure what we were gonna do about countertops. We had talked about painting them or somehow like reusing them, keeping the countertops we had and just making them better. But after I placed the order for the sink, I realized we wouldn't be able to use our countertops anyway because it's an undermount sink. So the hole that was previously cut in the countertops would not match with the hole we'd have to cut for an apron front farmhouse undermount sink. We were getting real creative. We're like, maybe we'll just like fill in the holes with concrete or something. We actually came across countertop paint um, that looks like marble and it looks great for you know a temporary uh, budget friendly fix but when i went to place the order for the paint it ended up costing over a thousand dollars and we're like this just doesn't even make sense anymore spending over a thousand dollars to paint our countertops does not feel right <laughs> so we went on the hunt for countertops we went to the cheapest place we knew for laminate countertops we got our kitchen priced out and it came to over three thousand dollars not including installation one day i was browsing home depot i came across these butcher block slabs we had heard everywhere that butcher block was really expensive and so we never really looked into it but when i saw these on home depot i added to cart i was very pleasantly surprised to see that the total cost was under a thousand dollars it was cheaper to get brand new solid wood butcher block countertops for our kitchen than it was to paint our existing countertops. So naturally we placed the order online and then we waited and we waited and we waited until finally. Today is the day I've been waiting for for a very long time. These countertops are being ripped out. Our countertops finally arrived. We have our faucet, we have our sink, we have everything we need now. And our contractor had a free day and he wanted to help us out. So he's gonna help us install these countertops today, which was perfect because he has all of the proper equipment um, and he also has the experience and knowledge. I get my dream sink today, my dream faucet, and my dream countertops, all in one. This is a huge step in our progress towards the kitchen being complete. Until now, the kitchen has really been put on hold because we haven't been able to you know, do backsplash or the wall treatments or anything like that because we've been waiting for this to be done.
Zach spent a few minutes taking out the old countertop, removing the old sink, tossing it all out, and then it was ready for our contractor. Our contractor had this done within half a day. First he measured, cut the slabs, and did a dry fit to make sure everything fit nice and snug. We did end up sacrificing a little bit of overhang on our, is it a peninsula? Or is it an island? Now because this counter in particular is a little bit larger than your average counter, the butcher block slabs didn't come large enough. So we just ended up sacrificing a little bit of the overhang, which is perfectly fine for now. It actually frees up a little bit of space in the dining room. Use a special tool that cuts slits into the wood where the joints would be. Then he used waterproof wood glue and these little wooden discs. Just pop those discs into those spaces and pressed the countertops together. This is how you properly install butcher block countertops and it really helps take care of the warping. There's actually a lot of warping in one of the pieces. This completely took care of that. He screwed them all in place and then got working on installing the sink. So the sink is a little bit special because it's an undermount sink. It goes underneath the counter and so it needs something to support it, to hold it up. So he had to build a little bit of a frame underneath the sink for the sink to sit on. Then he cut a few more holes in the top of the countertops for the faucet. Our plumber came the next day, hooked everything up, everything worked beautifully, and then we just got to work finishing up the countertops a little bit. Zach sanded down the joints just so that they were even and there wasn't any lip. And then we cured the countertops with butcher block oil, and we did this a number of times to really get it soaked in. It is an extra thing that we're gonna have to do in order to take care of these countertops, but it's very simple and definitely worth it. I will say I was mildly disappointed by how uh, deep the wood got after uh, curing the countertops. When they were first installed, they were raw wood, right? So they were quite light in color and I really enjoyed that light color of wood. And when we cured the countertops, it was just really quite shocking seeing the color difference. But now after living it for a little while, I think the countertops have lightened up just a smidge and I've gotten so used to it. I think they're beautiful and I'm just so happy. There is plenty more to be done in this kitchen, but we're saving all those fun finishing details for part two of this kitchen renovation. So stay tuned. Hopefully in a few months we'll have that done and I'll have that video ready for you. But for now, let's take a look at what we started with. And this is how it looks now. We have come such a long way. This kitchen looks completely transformed already and it's not even done yet. I am thrilled to say the least. I am, it's been a ton of work. Renovating kitchen is the worst renovation to do, especially when you're living in it. The kitchen is really the heart of the home. Like I am here all day, every day. Most of my time is spent right here. And so having the space feel welcoming and inviting was very important to me and I'm so happy we did it.
stay tuned for part two. We're gonna be doing the backsplash, wainscoting, more painting, painting window trims, painting doors. Make sure to hit subscribe, stick around. I share more than just renovation videos. I share a vlog every single week and I share other stuff here as well. And if you've missed the other episodes of our home renovation series, I'll leave all those links below. We've done a nursery, we've done a patio, and we've done the living room so far. Currently, we are in the process of doing our master bathroom as well. That one is gonna be an insane transformation. Throughout the next few years, we're going to be continuing to work on this house, and so I'm gonna be continuing to have videos to share with you. So stick around, we have so much to share. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.